Hi guys, this is Grace Pamela, Summerunner.com, and today I'm going to go over which file formats to choose when shooting with your camera, your DSLR camera, and when you're working with your files in Lightroom. So I'm going to go ahead and go over it into Lightroom, and I'm just going to quickly go over the difference between RAW versus JPEG uh, when you're out and shooting. So JPEG is basically what you see is what you get on the back of your camera. Um, a lot of times when you're shooting really fast-paced settings like a wedding or anything like that, uh, it's important to get the settings right in your camera, otherwise you'll end up with an image you can't really use or edit because JPEG is pretty much just a flattened image. The way that I like to look at it is a RAW file is uh, it has multiple layers within it. It doesn't really, but it does store all of the information from that day of your shoot. So it's really cool because it, it's it really saves all of the details like the lighting so like for example this image is a raw file now let's say if I shot it in JPEG it would be just stuck like this I, I could edit it as best as I can but it'll start to get really pixelated because its details get really lost so this would just be black now since I shot in raw I can go ahead and mess with it and you can see the details starting to show through where I wouldn't have been able to see it before because it's, um, like I said, it's a raw format and it has all of the details stored inside of it. So a lot of photographers like to shoot in raw because it, even though it is a very large file, so you will need to make sure you have your memory cards um, in stock, so just in case, because they do take up a lot of room and that's because it's storing so much information, but they are great. Um, for beginner photographers or just in general so you always have that file to come back to just in case. Another option you can do is shoot in JPEG plus RAW which lets you save both options. So just in case you don't really need the RAW file but it's nice to have it as a backup um, but then again it, that does take up a lot more space than just RAW so you definitely need to make sure you have enough room. Okay so as you can see this image is a raw format and I'm able to completely edit it completely like I want. I can bring back some of the details that were not there when I shot and bring them back. And I was able to brighten up the image. Now the only thing people don't like about raw is when you first upload it, it looks really bland like this. Um, obviously I shot this too bright and it's great because now I can go ahead and fix it. But it still looks really dull. It looks really boring and gray and lifeless. So one quick fix that I like to do to make it look like a JPEG, like it did on the back of your camera, to the best of its ability, which you can still do with RAW, which is pretty neat, is go down to Camera Calibration. Once you're down there, you select the arrow here, and you can go ahead and go to Profile, and select down from this menu one of these options. Each image will be different. You can choose whichever you like and it will bring it back pretty much to how it looks on the back of your camera, which is pretty neat. And then you can go on back up and continue editing however you see fit. So, now we have our beautiful image, we have all of the details back that we want or don't want, and we can not, it, it's still a gorgeous image, and we're not getting pixelated, and all of that fun stuff. So, now that you know the difference between RAW and JPEG in camera, the thing is about RAW, once you have your RAW format, it's a NEF file and you cannot save it as an NEF file. You can, but there's not much you can do with it. So the next important thing is you're going to want to go over to Library and you're going to want to go to Export. And here, you're going to have to save it as a different type of file. So you can see here in the file settings right here in case it's not up for you. There's different ones here. You can go down to File Settings and Image Format. The original is the RAW format. There's not much you can do with it, and that is an NEF file. So you have to go down the drop-down menu, and you can save it either as a JPEG, a PSD, or a TIFF, or a DNG. I'm going to go over these three. So a JPEG is a file that is, like I said, it's pretty much flattened. It's ready to go. Um, it does compress when you save it to Facebook or when you save it in general. So each time you save it, it does compress and lose details in that file. It loses quality. So you want to make sure you're finished editing completely before you save it as a JPEG. 
a PSD file will save its layers along with it. So it'll save the editing effects that you did um, and then it'll you'll be able to upload it into save it for later. So let's say you have a bunch of editing that you did to it and you want to save it for tomorrow so you can finish editing it. You can save it as a PSD and then you can open it as a PSD and go back to where you were. Which is pretty neat when you're working in a lot of sessions and you need that ability. But again, a PSD you cannot save just like a NEF file or a RAW file. You cannot upload it anywhere to a website or anything like that. So if you want to save it, upload it to your website, your best bet is a JPEG because it will be a small formatted file and it will uh, not take up so much memory on your website, which can cause your website to take forever to load or even crash if you have so many large files. Now a TIFF file is the next best thing for if you want to send it off to print, this is the next biggest file um, the, other than raw. So, and it's not nearly, it doesn't compress like a JPEG would. So a TIFF file is not the greatest for when you're uploading to the web or anything like that, but it's great for when you're sending it to print or if you're bringing it later on into Photoshop because it will store as much information as it can without it being too large. But again, it is a large file, so you want to make sure you know uh, what your file differences are. So then once you have it chosen, you can go to select it and you want to make sure your quality is at 100 because it's already going to depress as it is. You don't want to you don't want to compress it more yourself and then have Facebook or something compress it even more. So you want to make sure it's at 100. And then you can go ahead and export. So that's the differences between the different file types and between raw and and JPEG when you're shooting. I hope it was helpful and thank you so much for watching.